Are you interested in making money with 3D printing on demand? Have you just been kicked off 3D hubs? Well, stuff them. In today's video, I'm gonna talk about how you can make money yourself 3D printing on demand without any of these external websites, but it will take a little bit of hustle. Let's get started. How's it going guys? Angus here from Makers Muse and welcome to a very special video which has been spurred on by 3D Hubs kicking off everyone who is in the hobby 3D printing bracket. So 3D Hubs started where you could list your services and your, your 3D printers you have at home and then people could send orders to you through their website and system and then you could print on demand and send it off to them. But at the end of this month, they're kicking everyone off who has these hobby level machines in favor for their industrial printers. But quite frankly, you don't need them. And I'm going to go through everything you need to know about 3D printing on demand yourself without any of these websites. But you might be asking two questions. One, who is this guy? And is he qualified to talk about 3D printing on demand? And two, what does he have to gain about telling me how to make money 3D printing on demand? Well, the first question, I actually did this as my full-time job for several years. I ran a print studio in Perth and I was the in-house designer and in-house print manager. I would take orders, provide quotes, talk to customers, do prints and send them out. I did the whole shebang for several years. And the second question, what do I have to gain? Well, I don't do that anymore. I run Makers Muse full time and I sort of found my calling as more of an educator rather than printing on demand. I've already done a video on how you can make money through various methods with 3D printing and I did talk about 3D printing on demand in that video, but I didn't go into any depth about exactly how I would go about doing it using my experience. So let's get straight into it. Okay, so what is 3D printing on demand anyway? Well, the concept is simple. A customer comes to you with a model and then basically you 3D print their model and then you send it off to them or give it to them and you charge them a, a amount of money in fair exchange. 3D printing on demand is quite popular because not everyone has a disposable income to buy a 3D printer even though they're getting cheaper these days but mostly not everyone has the skill or patience to run and maintain 3D printers. They just want the part and they're happy to pay fair exchange to get it. That's the core principle of 3D printing on demand. And many websites exist to do this on an industrial level. Shapeways and now 3D hubs offer this with high end machines, which cost hundreds of thousands of dollars. This leaves a gap in the market, in my opinion, for the lower side of things where people want stuff local or they're not prepared to pay hundreds of dollars for a 3D print. So let's start with the most important factor, choosing your 3D printer. Okay, so for 3D printing on demand, the most important factor, in my opinion, is reliability. Reliability, reliability, reliability. Everything else comes second because when you're printing to tight schedules with a, a backlog of prints you need to send and get, get off the machine, you don't want it to fail. There's nothing worse than having failures after failures after failures or constantly having to tinker and tweak your machine to make it work. So in my experience, that comes before print quality. You see, you can have machines that can print it really high detail, but they're finicky and models don't really always work on them. So like these machines behind me, I'd probably choose the Prusa, like the Mark IIS here, probably not multi-material, but single color, that's a fairly, fairly reliable printer. The uh, Cocoon Create on the other hand, however, I modified it for printing in flexible filaments, but I wouldn't really list that as a service because it's really unreliable and geometry dependent. And then the Craftbot Plus way down here, extremely bulletproof machine, prints happily day in day out, but the print quality isn't really that great. However, if you make that clear with your clients, they'd much rather get something on time and to a reliable standard than something that might work really well, but sometimes you'll have to tell them, well, sorry, uh, your print failed again, and I need to print it again. I've been there, it sucks. Go for something reliable. It doesn't have to be expensive, but just make sure that, the, that it's clear to your customer, the quality that they're gonna get, and it's dependable. And this also goes for the filament ranges you offer. I see some people offering everything under the rainbow. We'll print in blue, white, black, pink, red, whatever. Choose a range of filaments that you can keep in stock that you know 
print well. For example, a gray, a white, a black. White and black just seems to be the most popular colors anyway. Um, and only consider other colors for high batch, high volume prints or high value customers. Don't do it for just one off small batch prints. I would recommend sticking to a small amount of well-known tweaked filaments that you can rely on and you have in stock for your printing service. And if you're not sure what 3D printer to get, well, I have tons of reviews and tutorials and guides around 3D printers and what to expect. But again, don't go for something that's not reliable. Go for something that is, it doesn't have to be expensive, but you just have to make sure that the prints more often than not actually succeed. Yes, even in 2018, this is still a consideration. But if you're already on 3D hubs and you already have a range of printers you know works reliably, then you don't have to worry about that too much. We can move on to the next important stage, becoming known. This is extremely important because we're no longer be, gonna be listed on a single website where people can find you through that website. You're going to have to go out on your own and attract customers to you. This sounds daunting and to a degree it is, but it's also exciting and also far more powerful and lucrative than having people come to a single, singular website to find hundreds of hubs. You really want people to seek you out because they know you do really good jobs and you have a really reliable turnaround and you're a really, really good guy. So how would you do that? Well, first of all, you wanna list it on places that people might be looking for printing on demand. So for example, in Australia, we have Gumtree. I think it's in the UK too. Um, in the you guys in the States might have Craigslist. Uh, they're a good place to start, but also seek out your local universities or schools or TAFEs or whatever you call them there, colleges, etc., where students might need to print things, for example, for engineering classes or industrial design classes, and then they might need prints on demand. Also, you kind of want to become known by all the local sort of mad uh, inventors and film uh, studios where they might need small props and things, or maybe engineering firms with jigs where they don't actually yet have their own 3D printers. These are really good opportunities to enlist for your services. And again, if you give them a good result, they'll keep coming back to you. And uh, it's worth noting that you probably wanna jump onto 3D Hubs and contact all your previous customers if possible. It's been a while since I've been on 3D Hubs, I got kicked ages ago. Uh, and tell them that you're now gonna be available separately. And what's the worst that they're gonna do? Kick you off their platform? They're already doing that. So basically try to contact your old customers if you're not already in contact with them and let them know that you'll be still be doing printing on demand for them just directly. What's wrong with that? Next is extremely important. You want to develop yourself a brand. Here on Maker's Muse, I developed my logo, I developed the name, I got a domain name, I got the, the YouTube channel, I got the Twitter handle. I developed a brand around me basically. And you want to do the same. You want to jump on your favorite social platform, social media platform, and share your, your awesome prints that you're doing, providing that your client allows the release of that. And then also maybe consider sharing tips and tricks and tutorials, like maybe you're really good at Maya, so how to export good 3D printing files from Maya, stuff like that. Basically give back to the community and maybe even find a specific niche that you can really crack and you're passionate about. So then those people, when they need something done or their friend, comes to them and says, hey, I need something done. They go, oh yeah, I know him. Go straight to him. Developing a brand is extremely important because as I just suggested, you want to enlist word of mouth advertising. Word of mouth is hugely powerful. You want basically people to, su to suggest to you when their friends and family and colleagues ask, where do I go to get this done? It's free and it's really powerful because they trust the person who recommended you. Um, and I would recommend that well above any kind of AdSense or AdWords or anything like that where you pay for advertising. You know, who, who looks at advertising? You probably skipped the, the ad before this video. Let's be real. Um, and basically with a good brand, you can really start to get those orders in, but it will take time. Uh, be prepared for a fairly long slog and fairly long hustle to get your brand well established, but just be passionate and realistic about it and you will actually yeah, you can actually get really, really far. I never thought I'd be here um, when I started Maker's Muse, but here I am doing this as my job and I absolutely love it. So definitely get a good brand in place and get the domain name. Domain name is extremely important. All right, so we've established that you need to develop a brand external to these websites, but the crux of why people tend to use these websites anyway is 
pricing. The thing about these websites that make them so attractive is it does the quoting for you. It takes the STL file in and spits out a number that then you can, you can then go just and print the thing and not worry about getting the actual pricing. So this is where it's gonna be a little bit more difficult to go alone. Um, there is quoting engines available, but they're often not cheap, especially if you're just doing this on a small volume. Uh, but it's definitely possible to do it just manually. So my first tip on pricing and quoting, do not compete on price. You don't wanna be the person offering the lowest amount because in my experience, those are the worst clients. People who shop on price for bespoke items really, really are a pain in the ass, if I'm being completely honest, because they don't understand technology, they don't appreciate your efforts and your work, and they are not loyal. They'll just go to the next person who goes cheaper than, than you by five cents. Uh, it's like those people that go on eBay and just search, you know, cheapest and go for the one that's like a cent cheaper. <laughs> Anyway, basically don't compete on price, but don't be afraid to manually quote. So the major attraction to a lot of these websites was the fact that the quoting system was automatic. Someone would upload an STL file and then the system would quote it automatically for you, which is really handy and hands off. However, it's also kind of dangerous. I mean, how many people had people uploading? How many times did you have people uploading files that were in centimeter format, not millimeters or inches, for example, and they were tiny and that they were like, wow, it's so cheap. And then you had to go back to them to say, actually, no, your file costs $200, not $2. $2. <laughs> they're like, oh, this is an outrage. So when you have to quote, quoting manually isn't such a bad thing, especially when we've established we're not gonna compete on price. We don't care about that lowest, lowest uh, tier. You can actually give a more of a bespoke service. So when people upload files, to you to quote uh, manually. There's various ways to do it. I just used, used to use an Excel spreadsheet basically. And you would put in your cost of material, your time and how much you uh, would, pro would quote for the time, the, uh, the depreciation on the machine, how many prints you wanna get off the machine before you would deem it paid off, for example, your labor and the startup cost as well. Essentially, this allows you to see the file before you even quote and you could say, okay, it's an architectural model exported out of uh, <laughs> some horrible software that's unprintable. Well, sorry, this can't be printed. Or maybe you'll offer a file fixing service in addition, or maybe their file isn't even, isn't even like possible with FDM machines. It's too thin or it's too delicate. Or maybe the file's perfect. In which case you just chuck it through your slicer, get a time and material estimate, and then go to your, your spreadsheet to get a quote. So basically you wanna make sure you take all costs into account. And if you're looking to 3D print on demand just as a hobby and you don't really care about paying your machine off, whatever, then you probably should stop watching this video because I'm about taking it seriously and actually making a profitable, sustainable business around printing on demand. But the takeaway here is to put a lot of time into your quoting engine. So you just need to put in your print material amount and your print time and it'll spit out a cost. Now, value added extras. This is my favorite part, all right. So I've talked about um, the idea of file fixing. So file fixing is where the model is bad. It's not ready to be 3D printed. You can do this with Mesh Mixer and other uh, bits of free software like Blender, and it's, a, it's an art form. So if you can file fix, you should charge money for it. How much you know, should you charge? Well, it's up to you. you know, I would charge $75 an hour for it. And design fees, designing stuff. So if someone comes in with a model and that's not quite right and they need it tweaked or they come in with an idea without the model, you can charge money for that. Then there's my favorite two, the rush fee and the pain in the ass fee. All right, some clients will just be the sort of type that want it really quickly and then you can charge them a lot of money for it because you have to push other prints out further from the queue. And then some clients will just be a real pain and really you need to charge them more money to be make it worthwhile working for them. Um, that might be a bit controversial, but it's just how I treat it, which is another reason that it's better to actually do the quoting in-house yourself than rely on external engines, which are indiscriminate of the client and exactly what they want. So there we go, that's pricing, very quick. I'm not gonna go into much more detail on that. Spend your time on it though. Now the next is some warnings and final advice. Starting with disclaimers. So you're 3D printing things on hobby level machines. These prints, if they're in PLA for example, are not suitable for 
high end use where human lives might be at stake. They're not suitable for car parts. They're not suitable for medical parts. Make sure you have a very good disclaimer that goes with all quotes before you even print them. And it needs to be very clear that you're not responsible for any injuries or property damage or anything like that should your part fail. Cause this is just a 3D print. You can't guarantee it's gonna be that great in terms of strength or reliability in the elements like I just showed in my video exposing PLA to the sun for a year. Uh, you need to make sure that's good and possibly consult a lawyer about it because in the case that something happens, you wanna be protected. Next is be legit for tax purposes. I am a sole trader here in Australia and by doing so, every purchase I have relating to the channel is a tax deduction. Does mean I have, however, do pay tax um, every quarter and I keep a log of that um, in zero. So I use zero for bookkeeping, keep a, keep a log of my receipts and my income. It's a whole other thing I never expected to be doing myself, but if you're gonna do it legit, you need to do it like that. Um, not saying do it like sole trader, depends on your country. Again, this is not legal or business advice. Go seek out proper advice for your country. I'm just saying how I do it. Next, don't be a yes man. My old boss was a lovely guy, but he would say yes to pretty much every job that walked through the door which led to a lot of problems for me when I had to try to make these jobs actually work. Like, can you 3D print a huge residential model using just Google Maps data? Yeah, sure we can. <laughs> Angus, look at the job we've got. Or can you 3D print clear? Or can you 3D print this job to pick up tomorrow? It only takes 14 hours and the file's full of errors. Don't say yes for every job. Again, you don't wanna get the low, low end pricing. You don't wanna compete on price and you don't wanna compete on saying yes to everything. It's not worth it. Work on your brand and work on good clients. And on the same vein, don't be afraid to fire bad clients if they stuff you around and give them a refund and make them walk and reward good clients. I legit still have people contacting me. They seek me out through uh, somehow, I think they find me on Makers Muse now, to ask me if they can do print jobs for them. And these are people I worked with before I had the channel, when I was just printing on demand. I didn't even run the company. I, they just knew me because I did a good job for them. So they seek me out and I'm like, sorry, I don't do that anymore. So you wanna do good jobs for good clients and they will keep coming back. Don't be afraid to say no to stupid requests. Like, can you 3D print clear? No, you can 3D print with clear filament, but it won't be clear. Hope that makes sense. And finally, I have this quote, which is under promise, over deliver. So my dad gave this mug to me and he's a fantastic business mentor. Basically, what this means is you don't wanna promise more than you can actually deliver. Um, but it's actually more valuable to under promise and then deliver more value. So for example, here's a scenario. Someone comes in with a print that takes 12 hours. You could say, yeah, sure, you can pick it up tomorrow. But what if something goes wrong? Well, here's two scenarios. You'd have to call them up and be like, oh, hey, Mark, sorry, your print failed overnight. You'll have to pick it up the next day. Awkward, sucks, I had to do those calls, hate it. Or you can say, great, you can pick it up in two days. And they're like, can I pick it up tomorrow? Like, no, sorry, two days. Then you call them the next day when it succeeds and say, hey, the print is finished early. Would you like to come pick it up today? This gives you room. If the print fails, you can get them the next day. But if it succeeds, which it probably would, they're happy. They're actually really quite stoked that you're realistic and they can pick it up earlier or they pick it up on the day you promised. So under promise and over deliver. And I hope I've done that here in this video today. And quite frankly, stuff 3D hubs. If they're gonna go professional, that's, that's their choice. And really you should feel confident to go out on your own and build a brand and business around your services and offering and give them to people in for fair exchange. And you can make a profitable business out of it. It's not gonna be easy, just like everything, everything when you're running and starting a business, it's not gonna be easy, but you can do it. And I hope I've shown you here today just some information on doing that. If you did enjoy this video, guys, please consider subscribing to Makers Muse because I'm all about the hustle here. I, I, okay, I did buy this shirt pretty much to wear it for a video like this. I would love to have you on board and I look forward to seeing you again very shortly. Catch you later, guys. Bye.